Hi, today I am going to start work on the foreground of the print and I'm going to print the rock faces this morning. So just to explain to you, I have the blocks that make up the whole of the foreground. So here are the rock, here is the rock face that I'm going to print and you can see it's already got some water on it damping ready to print while I talk to you about the other blocks. This block is for the turf area and you can see where I've cut away for the rocks to fit together like a jigsaw and then on the back there is a much more detailed block and this is the block that's going to do the line work and the shadows for all those rocks and give some texture as well and then the final block in the foreground is the lino block and this is the final block to give the last bit of shadow and texture. So that's going to have to be printed very differently from the, the printing that I'm doing today. So to go back to the rock face that I'm going to print, I have mixed up a set of grey greens. You can see here, actually let's put it around the right way, in various shades. So that's olive green and Sumi ink. And the first colour is just olive green on its own with some water. And then in these colours here, I've added some Chinese white to make them slightly opaque. And you can see they're making a sort of greyer colour because they've had a little bit of sumi in them. So I've got four colours to play with. And I'm just going to blot off the paint. The other thing that I should say is you, you probably noticed I've got one damp pack here with my prints in. If I were working normally, I would be spread out along the length of the studio and I would have two damp packs. I'd have a sort of in damp pack and an out damp pack with the prints in. So as I printed, they transfer into from one pack to the other as I was going along, which is a much more efficient way of working. But unfortunately, it's not very camera friendly. So I'm, I'm muddling along at the moment with the um, one pack. So I'm going to put a wash of this very transparent olive green on to begin with and I'm going to add a fair proportion of rice because I want these rocks to be fairly smooth. Now the block may show a little bit of wood grain. Um, we'll see what we get with this. I haven't worked over this block. You know, I if you watched the previous film where I was printing the big grey block in the background, I was talking about trying to get that perfectly smooth. This one I am not so fussed about. So I'm going to start working that in. With my brush. Now in the UK, you can't get these deer hair brushes. You can only get horse hair brushes at the moment. Um, and horse hair brushes are good. There's nothing wrong with them at all. Um, I just happen to have had access to buying these deer hair ones. Um, I'm also periodically asked about non-animal products um, by people who prefer not to use animal products. And as yet, I can't offer any advice about brushes. I've never seen this technique done with a synthetic brush, and I don't really know about that. But there are various brush manufacturers, um, and my advice is, if you're interested in that, speak to a manufacturer and see if they can provide an answer. So I'm going to get my print, and... If you haven't watched my other films, just to remind you about holding it, it's as though you are going to snip with your fingers. And I'm holding it fairly low down so that I can use my thumb to fit the print accurately into the corner kento, then into the straight kento and let it fall into place. And this is just baking parchment to act as a buffer. And the baron I'm using for printing here is a ball bearing one, which is why you can hear the noise. There we go. And actually that's rather nice. I don't 
I show you here, you can see I'm getting a little bit of wood grain happening. So how much of that will remain visible? Not sure, but that's the first layer. And now I'm going to start building up and I like to keep a drawing. I happen to have a proof print here to refer to, but I like to keep a drawing so that I can work out where I want the light and the dark areas to be with something like this, because you look at this and it's not immediately obvious. So I'm going to move on to my next colour, my next darkest colour, which is still quite pale. And I'm just going to put that where I think I need it. So just working that over. And when you're mixing colours for woodblock, bear in mind that as, the, as they're printed wet, they're very vibrant but they will quieten down as the print dries. And also, as you work with them, you're adding rice paste, which is naturally going to dilute them a little bit. So when you're mixing, do factor in that you're going to lose a little bit of punchiness. So you might want to up the, the mix to a little bit bolder than you think you need, because as they dry and as, as the rice dilutes them, you're going to lose a little of the intensity. So I'm I'm working here. I'm not doing a, a proper shading. Again, if you watched the previous films, you'd have watched me doing a Bokashi, a shading. Here, I'm just being a lot looser about how I'm inking hair there. Let's just get that out of the way. So when you're inking up, just take your time to work round and check that you have gone to all the points of your print. It's very easy to skip a corner. And while if the corner hasn't got any paint on it, that doesn't really matter and you can re-ink. What can happen is that you can have loose paint in an area and you haven't worked it into the wood. And then when you print, of course, that splots into the print and completely ruins it. So it's really worth just taking your time. There we go. Now I would never work like this for additioning. I would work with each layer and work through all the prints because that's the best way to keep the block in its best state to print. But it's not very exciting for you guys to watch. around so we can look at it properly. So now you can see I'm starting to build up the colour and it's quite subtle but that's kind of the point. It's the beauty of Japanese woodblock is this delicate layering and build up. So sometimes when I teach I have people who come along and they kind of want the punchiness of lino cut in a woodblock print and that sort of misses the point. You can print these prints to look very punchy if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a slightly different approach from the way that I use woodblock. So now I'm going upper shading and I'm just thinking about where I want to have that dark happening. So I want dark here. So it's just sort of thinking where the light might hit and the dark be. So here. Leave that bit at the top. And again, this is something that I will get my head around at the proofing stage. By the time I was printing, I'd have worked out exactly where I want everything to be. And you're probably noticing that I'm using the same brush again and again. And that's because it's the same family of colours and also I'm only working on one print so the brush is not filling with paint. If I were if I were additioning I'd be using a clean brush for each layer of colour and I'd be much more careful about it but for a one-off print the, the brush isn't taking up so much colour that it's a problem. So 
I'm working the paint in quite a loose way and I don't really mind if there are brush marks here because remember this is a rock face and rocks are rugged shadowy things anyway so I, I don't mind if there's the odd sweep of a brush mark going on. And of course this Kento registration system makes it very easy to keep putting the print back into the same place. So now you can see this build up of colour is really starting to happen now and I'm going to put a final very dark colour in here and then move over to the line block to add more detail. So let's just put that back down. And I think the other thing about Japanese woodblock when you're new to it is getting your head around that it's it's very seldom one block, one layer of colour. And I might use a block like this to print more. I mean, I only printed this, what, four layers. I might print six, eight layers to build something up. It really depends. Um, so my woodblocks have many, many layers. I mean, it has to be said that my lino blocks are starting to behave like that as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go, what should we have? I'm just done a little think here. So for a traditional printer working like Will Francis does, Will you'll have seen in previous films in this series, this would be anathema because it's not you're not perfectly repeating each time the same shadings in every print. If I were printing the edition, it would be reasonably consistent because, as I say, I would be printing through every print at each layer rather than taking one print and doing lots of layers on it. So they are surprisingly consistent, but they are not perfectly consistent. And in traditional Japanese woodblock, in the Edo period, and the kind of work that Will is doing, it's all about that perfectly the same each time, which is a very different skill. Um, as the creative artist, I'm more interested in getting things how I want them to feel, rather than in absolutely replicating identical print. So for me, each print receives individual attention, and I might tweak things a little bit for each print to make that print work as well as I can. So now you can see actually the wood grain is working very nicely here. That will be hidden quite a bit by the line block. And that's as dark as I want to make this because the line block's coming to, to sit on top of that. So I'm just going to pop that back in the damp prop block proper and change over to the line block. So now I'm going to move on to the line block and you'll see that I've damped it. 
and I'm going to be very careful mopping it off. When you have a block that's as intricate as this, obviously these little holes can fill up with paint or with water and cause a problem with printing. So I'm just going to be very careful to wipe everything off carefully. And I have mixed up a deeper grey. So we had the four greens before and now I've mixed up a deeper grey green for my outline block. And I'm printing this block before I print the grass area, even though this block goes over the grass. These lines will look like they're on top of the grass, but I'm printing it first because I want them slightly knocked back by printing on top of the, the grass printing on top of them. It's a bit hard to describe, but if I printed the grass first and then did this line block, the line block would be a bit too dominant. So I'm reversing the order of the printing. You know, sort of convention would say that the line block goes on last, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to put a little bit and I'm putting my paint more in the areas of the rocks. And you'll notice that instead of putting blobs of colour like I've been doing with the larger flatter blocks, with these line blocks, I'm not using very much paint on the brush, but I'm actually effectively painting the lines to begin with to make sure I've got even coverage. So if you have fine line detail, it's easier to sort of um, apply the paint like this rather than putting blobs of colour and then spreading them out. Okay. And I'm going to rely on spreading this paint out to colour up these bits because I don't want heavy application of the paint in those areas. If I need more, I can always reprint it. So let's see how we go. And again, some rice paste and that rice paste will do the job of giving you a nice smooth print but it will also lubricate the paint and help it to shift around. So I'm going to begin by working it into the rock areas. And then I'm going to start sort of pulling it out a bit into these areas of fine lines. And the brush does a really important job of making sure that there's no sort of uh, pools of paint. It's pulling out any excess paint. So it's very important to keep on top of managing your brushes. Once the brush has a lot of paint in it, it's just going to start slopping the colour around. So what I tend to do is I keep an eye on the brush and I have towel ready and I, I dob off. I'm not sure if dob off is the technical term, but that's what I do. I dob off the excess paint onto the towel until I get to the point where I just can't do that anymore. And then I have a clean brush. So, you know, manage your brushes. Because chances are, if you're struggling, it's because your brush has got claggy. Um, and again, that's a, that's a northern term, claggy. I mean, it's sort of full of paint, so that it's sticky and it's just pushing the paint around rather than doing its job. So, I'm never sure how international some of these terms are um, that I use, so I'll, I'll attempt not to use too many of them. So I'm going to go for my print again. And I'm being very careful here. I'm not putting much force on at all. I really don't want to squish this. I want to be thorough and make sure that I put pressure everywhere, but I really, really don't want to make this clumsy. And if you go at it like a bull at a gate and push too hard, you're just going to make all that fine cutting look clumsy. So just 
careful. So you're managing the pressure all the time when you're printing. So I'm just going to have a little peek. Yeah, that's looking quite nice. And here at the bottom, I'm being very careful because this is this is the bit where it would be really easy to push the paper down into the margin down at the front here but, so I'm I'm trying to get a really good edge without getting dirt and, and unwanted paint in the margin so that takes a little bit of a, a little bit of twiddling to do that's looking nice out of the way altogether so we can have a proper look. You can see now that I'm beginning to get really nice detail here. It's not quite right so I'm going to do a little bit of inking up, a little bit more inking up but before I do that I am just going to give this a blot with some newsprint. This one is one of the ones on the Fabriano Academia, so it's not a Japanese paper. So I just need to give it a little blot. And you can see there on that Western paper, it's giving back quite a lot of the paint. So a little touch up in that area. So just working out is this little cluster here that's not quite right so I'm just going to go with that again so that's so I would rather under ink and go back than over ink in the first place it's always a balance of uh, getting the, the sort of fine detail and getting enough emphasis you, know, you have to be careful and you see how I'm just blending out that area so that there's no harsh edges So now, just to finally show you, I have got more definition down here and I can, I've got my lines in the landscape and in the next film I'm going to start filling in this turf area. So thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me for the next part of the print.